Hey there kids and welcome to a brand new installment of FAQ here with your best buddy in all the world, Uncle Ben. On today's episode we're going to talk about all kinds of great stuff like building your down picking speed and stamina as well as ways to improve your right hand technique if you're a bass player. But before we get into that stuff, I've got a very special announcement. It's a guaranteed cure from the Corona Quarantine Blues. The chance of winning. Free stuff! I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys lately about the cables that I've been using here on my channel. And these are handmade by a company in Nashville, Tennessee called Runway Audio. They're made out of the highest quality components that are on the market today. They're coated in this impervious to bullets coating on the outside. They don't tangle up and they don't degrade your tone. I've been using these things on stage and in the studio for a couple weeks now and I can tell you guys that they are awesome. Trust me when I say you're going to want to try these things out and add them to your setup. And you can enter to win a $75 gift card to Runway Audio by simply entering the contest by clicking the link in the video description below. It's down there. Down there. Click on that. But if you don't feel like playing the odds, you can always go over to runwayaudio.com and use promo code BENELLER15, that's B-E-N-E-L-L-E-R-1-5, for an instant 15% off of your order. So don't delay, enter that contest today and check out Runway Audio Cables. Yeah, before we get to those questions, let's stop in at Uncle Ben's Boombox and check out what I've been jamming out to here lately. You've heard about astronauts, right? They go out into space. But where does an intronaut go? They go into here. That's why I've been listening to the new Intronaut album, Fluid Existential Inversions. Intronaut is a band that I've been into since their very first album, Void. And what I like about them is that they have this fine balance between proggy complexity and caveman-like brutality. I would say that you can hear some of the rhythmic complexity of a band like Meshuga mixed in with some of the proggy goodness that you get from bands like, like early Macedon stuff, Rush, Tool, as well as a good dash of all that awesome post-rock Neanderthal heaviness from bands like Neurosis. And also their bass player Joe sounds like what would happen if Jaco Pistorius played five string bass in a heavy band. The new record is probably the most psychedelic sounding thing that they've done so far. It's got some really long, jammy instrumental sections in there. It's also got a lot of layers of some really subtle like synthesizer and stuff going on. Lots of unusual textural tones on the guitars and bass. This is also the first album of theirs featuring drums by my good buddy, Alex Rudy Rudinger. Rudy has played with like every awesome metal band in history, most recently playing on tour with my good buddies in the band Whitechapel. He's one of my favorite dudes on the planet and just an absolutely savage drummer and he brings so much to this record. The rhythm section of the band has always been one of my favorite elements of it so initially when I heard about the departure of their former drummer I was a little bit bummed out but as soon as I heard Rudy playing on these tracks and the way that he and Joe lock in as a rhythm section all of my concerns were put to rest because they sound so great together and he brings a lot of energy to the album. The guitar work on the record is awesome too and I love the fact that they're not just using the same old you know boosted 5150 tone that every other band is using. The tones on the record are really raw and slow and it just sounds like what happens when you put a microphone in front of a speaker and turn up an amp really loud. It also probably helps too that they're using those sexy Dunnable guitars that Sasha Dunnable, the guitarist and vocalist of the band, makes himself. I also think the production on the album really stands out for me because so many metal records today are overly hacked up, quantized, polished, all that other stuff that just sanitizes and cleans up the sound so much it doesn't even sound heavy or angry anymore. I love how organic and natural sounding the new album is. So be sure to check out Fluid Existential Inversions on Spotify, iTunes, or whatever streaming platform that you use. And also be sure to check out the back catalog too. Valley of Smoke that came out a few years ago is also one of my favorites. And now, on to the questions. All of today's questions come straight from my favorite people in all the world, my loyal supporters over on Patreon.com. You can become one of the cool kids by heading over to Patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars and helping support my channel for even as low as $1 a month. So my loyal patron Grumster asks, what made you move from Kemper to Axe FX? That's a good question. Sometime around the middle of last year, I started using the Fractal Audio Axe FX 3, which you can see in the background right here, and I have absolutely loved it. So let's say I was working on a recording project with the Kemper and I ran into a very specific tone that I wanted, like let's say a boosted Mesa Dual Rec through a Marshall cabinet. With the Kemper, you can't just build that. You have to find a profile that somebody else has already made of it. So that means I would spend hours going through the rig exchange, going through free profiles, hoping that somebody had made the tone that I was hearing in my head, 
or go through and buy a ton of profile packages from different profile makers and stuff and again hope that somebody made what I was after. Whereas with the Axe FX, if you know exactly what you're going for, the sound of this cabinet with this mic and this head and all that stuff, you can just build it yourself. I guess the downside is it takes a lot of experience to know exactly what it is that you're hearing in your head and how to get it out of there, but if you can dream it up, you can create it with Axe FX. Whereas with the Kemper, if you can dream it up, you have to hope somebody else has already made it for you. Not to mention the quality of the effects, like the delays and reverbs and stuff on the Axe FX are just hands down way better than the Kempers. And there's more to it than just those couple of things, but I'll get into that whenever one day I do a full A-B video on the two units on a future episode of Meet the Machines. Patron Mike Gross asks, do you have any practice tips on how to get better at down picking a la James Hetfield levels of down picking insanity? Yes, I do. But when we're working on our downstroke speed, especially in the world of like metal rhythm and stuff like that, you're working on speed and endurance. You can't really just have one without the other. And I'm gonna recommend that you improve both of those by starting with some bigger motions like hitting power chords before we move on into tightening it up and playing one string stuff like Metallica. And one of the ways you can do that is by following in the footsteps of the unsung downstroke master himself, Johnny Ramon of the Ramones. And what I want you to do is work on building up your endurance more like you're a marathon runner, right? You don't just decide, I'm going to run a marathon today and run all that distance, right? You have to build yourself up to it. So take a classic fast tune like Blitzkrieg Bop, for example. And what I want you guys to do is to play it all downstroke like Johnny until you start running out of steam. At that point, switch to alternate strumming while you kind of let those muscles cool down a little bit. You could even, for example, do downstrokes on the verses and then your cool down period with your alternate strumming is the choruses, kind of like this. One, two, three, four. All downstroke. Feel the burn. Here comes the chorus. This is our cool down period. Alternate strumming. You really feel your muscles relax here. And then you recharge, reverse, back to downstairs. Try to make your goals get longer and longer, like maybe you play the entire verse and half of the chorus all downstroke, and then have a shorter cooldown period and so on. One of my favorite things to do after you get that going on is to shrink this technique down onto a single string, like your palm muted low E, and practice with your metronome a little bit. I've got to set my metronome here for 100 BPM, but your mileage may vary. Be your own coach here and figure out exactly what tempo you need to be doing. Don't start at any tempo where you feel yourself automatically like tightening up and stiffening up and all that jazz. If you start playing tight right away, that means you're playing too fast. So back the metronome down to a tempo where you feel comfortable doing this down picking. I'm gonna use the same idea that I did with the Ramon stuff in that I'm not gonna play just nonstop downstrokes out of nowhere. Again, that's deciding to run a marathon today rather than training up to it. I'm gonna use bursts of speed with little cool down periods. My speed bursts are gonna be 16th notes, in other words, four per beat, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, and my cooldown period is gonna be eighth notes, two per beat, one and two and three and four and. Might sound something like this. One, two, three, four. When you back down into the eighth notes, I want you guys to really closely monitor everything that's going on in your entire arm up to your shoulder and all that jazz and see if anything changes. You know, Try to really notice if when you go to the fast 16th notes, if your shoulder rises up, or you start holding your hand or your elbow tighter, or something like that. By constantly going back and forth between the fast 16s and the more in control slow eights, you're really gonna be able to monitor any tension that you're building up when you start playing fast. And as you go along with this, maybe try doing longer and longer bursts of 16th notes as you feel comfortable with them. This time, I'm gonna to try to do three beats worth of those 16s and then take a break on a few beats of eighth notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. By making those speed bursts of 16th notes longer and longer while also monitoring your tension level by going fast and then slow with the eighth notes like that, you're really gonna be able to build up some serious speed and endurance with your down picking skills. My good buddy and patron Kalani asks, what's one non-string related instrument you'd like to learn how to play and why? Good question. Honestly, for me at this point, I think it would probably be keys considering I do so much of my own music and stuff here in my own home studio. If I could play keyboard really well, 
I wouldn't have to spend my life like writing everything in on the piano roll or like playing chords or building chords one note at a time because I'm a total idiot when it comes to playing piano. I know nothing about it and seriously just like poke my way through everything. Plus with the layout of a keyboard being so much easier to visualize and understand than the fretboard of a guitar, I feel like it's one of those things that I could use to help broaden my harmonic horizons and really learn new things and new chord types and visualize scales differently and stuff like that. And then I could also start doing piano covers of super obscure anime and video game soundtrack songs and make the big bucks. Loyal patron Daniel asks, what two guitars would make for the most epic solo battle ever? That's an easy one. Davy Stranger and Ashley Licks of Skank Banger, of course. Just another minute. Just gonna take up another minute. Hey, you watch in front of the camera. I just need one more minute. Uh, maybe two minutes. Two minutes here. In reality, it's like 25, but you know, hey. there's a two in there. The sooner I get done with this, the sooner you can start making me dinner. Fucking trying, man. This next question goes out to all you guys out there that are making the daddy notes happen down low on the big guitar. This is from my lovely patron, Robert Layton. He asks, what are some good songs slash exercises for right hand bass technique? This might come as kind of a shock to some of you guys, but I actually never practiced bass like ever. Over the years I have improved my bass playing just by playing in bands with amazing drummers, learning all different kinds of music, and just constantly grinding away playing gigs of all different types. I would say that whenever I did get serious about playing bass, I did have a little bit of a head start through my years of studying classical guitar playing, which of course is, you know, all finger style and very right hand intensive. But one thing that did help me develop my understanding of my own right hand technique and help me make some breakthroughs and play some stuff that I couldn't play previously, is adapting a little thing that I picked up, I believe from a video on Scott's Bass Lessons, which is a really great YouTube channel here with all kinds of resources for bass players and guitarists alike. In the video, Scott talked about how the primary habit of most bass players that play with you know, their first two fingers primarily, like I do, is to use kind of a technique that's based in alternating if you're ascending and more like economy picking for guitar players if you're descending. Check this out. So you can see the two fingers alternating as I ascend. Now, if I was descending down that same thing, it would look more like this. You might have noticed there that while I was descending, it wasn't just alternation between index and middle the entire time. Whatever the last finger to play a note on the string was, is the first finger to play a note on the next string when you're descending. Let me explain. So if I start with index, middle, index, middle. Okay, middle was the last note played on that string in the right hand, right? Now you'll notice as I did that, I went through and kind of rested on the next string right here, my D string. That means that this finger is already locked and loaded to play a note on that string, right? So I can go index, middle, index, middle, then reverse. Middle, index, middle. Last note was with the index, so that's what's gonna start the next string. Index, middle, index, middle was the last note on that string, so he starts the E. Middle, index, middle, index. Check it out again as I play down a C scale. This is gonna feature three notes, three notes, three notes, and two notes. Index, middle, index, index, middle, index, index, middle, index, index, middle. But if I was playing that same scale ascending, I would just alternate between the two fingers. So that really helped me learn how to control my right hand like a lot of my favorite bass players do. But I'd say a lot of the speed that I built up in my right hand came from learning songs by like 16th note masters like Jaco Pistorius, of course, as well as one of my other favorite dudes, which is Rocco Prestia from the band Tower of Power. Take a song like What Is Hit or There's Only So Much Oil in the Ground, slow it down to a sane tempo, and work on practicing with that discipline of alternate up, economy down, and you'll start to build up a lot of speed and control in that picking hand in no time. Well guys, thanks as always for tuning in to another episode of Fact You. It's been way too long since I did one of these, but I figure while we're all, you know, hold up in our houses due to this corona quarantine and stuff like that. It's a good time to get in touch with you guys, my loyal watchers and my super loyal patrons. 
and chit chat about some of the stuff that you guys have been wanting to know. And considering that this is going to go on for at least another couple weeks probably, I'll be doing a lot more of these, maybe one every week or two if I got enough cool questions coming in. So be sure to leave your question in the comment section below and maybe that'll get answered on the next episode of Fact You. Be sure to enter that runway audio cable giveaway by clicking the link in the video description below. And don't forget to go to the website and use promo code BENELLER15 for an instant 15% off your order. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars, and if you want to show some support for the channel, be sure to visit that Patreon page at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. There's also all kinds of downloadable tabs, bonus lessons, backing tracks, and more over there. So be sure to click the Patreon link in the video description and check out that page today. Please like me. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Well, guys, it's been fun as always, but it's dinner time. I got a jet. As for you guys, get away from the computer, go practice some guitar or bass. Less clicking, more picking.